Rwanda, it was home to one of the worst genocides ever witnessed. But the country has emerged, slowly repairing itself. We bring you the story of this nation's newfound strength and renewed promise. It's early morning in Rwanda and the bridge of the Nyanga Baronga River near the capital city of Kigali is slowly waking up to a day of commerce. During the 1994 Rwandan genocide, this same river was the site of untold horror. This is where Hutu militias dumped many of the bodies of the people they killed. In a reign of terror lasting some 100 days, an estimated 800,000 minority Tutsis and moderate Hutus were slaughtered at the hands of Hutu militias. Now, nearly two decades later, Rwanda is still burying the dead. A nation still grieving, still searching for closure. In the south of this small East African country, a ceremony is underway to finally lay to rest some 25,000 Rwandans killed in the genocide. Only five have been identified. The rest remain anonymous. Like everyone here today, Esperanza Moiza lost loved ones in the genocide. She's here like all the others to pay her last respects and to look forward. In the years following the genocide, Rwanda refocused determined to ensure a different future for the country. It's emerged as one of Africa's fastest growing economies. Poverty rates have dropped more than 10% in the past five years, and more than 90% of all children are now enrolled in primary school. But Rwanda committed itself to transforming more than just its economy. In a country where power structures have long been dominated by men, the country turned to its women to help reshape the nation's policies and laws. Rwanda now has the highest percent of women in parliament anywhere in the world. 56% of the country's parliamentarians are women, including Esperanza Moiza, who's proud to be part of her nation's transformation. When men had a majority, we had trouble passing anything that had to do with gender issues. But now, with our numbers, we have a stronger voice than before. According to Rwandan tradition, women didn't have an important role in politics. Women had to stay at home, they had to raise their children. But now, everyone sees that women and men are on an equal footing in the workplace. Whether working in an office or in politics, women and men complement each other now. Our daughters, who are already in grade school and secondary school, also want to enter parliament. Because they say to each other, there are a lot of moms there. If they can do it, we can do it too. That's already a step. Rwanda makes choices that can only lead to stability. They can only lead to building peace. Aurelien Agbononsi is the former head of the United Nations in Rwanda. Why? Because of implementing good governance principles, empowering women, giving them a sense of responsibility, 
and making them true partners in development projects. It's because of creating opportunities for young people by fostering growth in the private sector and promoting, above all, a culture of accountability. And perhaps there's no more clear example of the nation's transformation than what happens every last Saturday of the month in every village. Rwandans call this Umuganda or working together. In Umuganda, everyone is expected to participate in community work for the benefit of the entire nation. On this particular Saturday, parliamentarian Moisa joins her community to clear grass for a new footpath. After the work is done, they all come together to discuss issues that matter to them, issues like encouraging the women of Rwanda to keep fighting for change. We have to be looking out to be there for the family and in particular for women. That means that all of you women leaders, all these men support you. The country as a whole supports you. Rwanda supports you. It's a new Rwanda, they sing, one built together. A paradise in the eyes of the world. Oh!